Off the bat, one of the more noticeable oddities of this 11-year-old Shizu is the cloudiness in his left eye. Having had four whole trips to the vet in just under a year, it soon became apparent that the chronic issue was simply not improving. This prompted Dr. Singh to recommend an enucleation surgery, which involves the removal of Doc's eyeball. But just how exactly did it get to this juncture? And what are some of the considerations made before such a procedure even proposed? Set in Singapore, it is unsurprising that many pet owners often encounter tough decisions regarding their pet's welfare and health, such as that above. And this number is set to only increase given the rising affluence of Singaporeans and thus the likely number of new pet owners in Singapore. In today's video sponsored by Topayo Vets, we would explore the difficult topic of enucleation, drawing from the case of an 11-year-old male Shizu. So what exactly is enucleation? Put simply, it refers to the surgical removal of an eyeball. Evidently, this is a hard choice for pet owners, so one might wonder why might enucleation even be considered in the first place. A core aim of enucleation is to relieve suffering in a pet that has been plagued by diseases affecting the eye, particularly in cases in which the pet is suffering from chronic pain or itching. And unfortunately, such diseases seem to affect certain breeds of dogs more so than others. Short-snouted breeds with prominent eyes like Shizus, Pugs, Pagangeses tend to be more susceptible to eye prolapses and corneal ulcerations due to their shallower eye sockets and tendency for the eyelids to roll inwards and irritate the corneal surface. Eye prolapses refer to the displacement of the eyeball, typically as a result of trauma. Corneal ulcerations, on the other hand, refer to the erosion of layers of the cornea, typically through the epithelial layer at least. In such instances, fluid from tears is absorbed into the stroma, giving the eye a cloudy appearance. In even more severe cases, where the erosion occurs up till the decimates membrane, the condition is known as the semital cell. Corneal ulcerations are typically diagnosed by using a fluorescein test. A green stain, as shown in the picture here, denotes a positive result for the condition. If such problems become chronic and uncontrollable by medication, it will bring persistent discomfort to pets and pet owners alike, just like it has in this particular case of this Shizu. So we know enucleation is a way to relieve suffering in pets, but just how is it performed? Patients like the Shizu here would first typically be hospitalized for a day with an IV drip ran to prepare the body for general anesthesia. The surgery would then commence the following day with the dog being put under general anesthesia. The hair around the eye would then be shaved to allow for better viewing of the surgical site. The enucleation process involves the severing of the muscle attachments, optic nerve and eyelids. After those are done, the eyeball is then removed. The skin is then stitched back over the eye socket and a small gap for drainage is left behind. The dog is then typically given antibiotic eye drops and a course of painkillers and anti-inflammatories. Additionally, an e-collar is also often attached to help prevent self-induced trauma to the wound, so as to promote healing. Okay, so we now know the basics of enucleation, but was enucleation really necessary in this case? Well, Dr. Singh certainly thinks so after examining the long medical history of this Shizu. Oh. And we will talk about the history. So it was 11 months ago, huh? Yeah. First consultation. First consultation, we did the under the gas anesthesia, we did the eye flashings and then fluorescent eye test. Fluorescent eye test show positive. And positive showing that there is corneal ulcer. The corneal will be stained green. Huh? Okay, so the one was diagnosis would be corneal ulcerations. And it was 11 months ago. After okay. that, a month later, 10, 10, months ago, 10 months ago, he came for the second consultation with the complaints of TRA left eye and the eyeball is prolapsed. Prolapse, yeah, the eyeball pop out a bit more than normal. The cornea is quite uh, about 90% of the eyes. Uh, that means there is some uh, inflammation, night keratitis. Blind, mm. Night blindness occur occasionally, left eye and retina also have hemorrhage and have no eye redding. Okay. We did the fluorescent eye test again, but this time showed negative. Ah, so there's no eye ulcer because it's 
is already scarring and healed up. Okay, that was ten months ago. Then after that, after the for the third concert, the concert uh, one month ago, a month ago, he came for the third concert. Mm -hmm. Same problem, left eye discharge and cloudiness. There was a left eye, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we do the eye flashings and do the fluorescent eye test, show negative. Okay, then after that, the after that, fourth consultation. Fourth consultation, less. Four days ago, mm. he came for the fourth consultation with the same problem, left eye discharge and then cloudiness of the eyes. And dry eyes. So dry eyes. I recommended the eyeball to be removed because the dog has been rubbing the eyes on the wall and uh, it was really bad. Evidently, despite the hard efforts to treat the Shizu's condition, it was to little avail and his condition in fact deteriorated at one point, resulting in a prolapsed eyeball as pointed out by Dr. Singh. In this case, it has become apparent that enucleation would likely have been the most humane way forward. This clip here was taken on the 21st of October, 2019, day 3 after the operation. As can be seen, the surgical site is slightly bruised, which is indicative of self-inflicted trauma by the dog. This is reminiscent of how the dog had previously rubbed its eyes against the wall and sofa at home, highlighting the amount of discomfort that this condition has brought the dog. This bruising also goes to show that the e-collar is insufficient in preventing this, so a fentanyl patch was also applied to hopefully relieve some of the pain. Fortunately for the dog, the bruising should disappear in about 14 days, freeing the dog to live a much more comfortable life. As a concluding note, it is worth pointing out that enucleation can be avoided if eye injuries are properly treated, or if corneal ulcerations are not deep, so pet owners should seek immediate veterinary help should they notice such conditions in their pets. If left unattended, such conditions can progress to become chronic issues and if they become uncontrollable by medication, then perhaps enucleation would be a possible consideration. Enucleation should ideally be considered with the pet's welfare in mind, but in reality, many other factors such as financial strain may also play a role in such a decision. Whatever the case may be, transparency and communication between pet owners and veterinarians are essential when deciding on the best move forward, as with many other situations in this trade. For more information, you can check out tobiovets.com and thanks for watching.